Rodney Ahinken from Rahen Group Limited. It's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, this is a familiar face. I have Papa Smurf, Rodney <laughs> Ahinkin, the, I'm going to say the chief of Ghana Forex, um, possibly the chief of all of Forex in Africa, because he's been to so many different countries, and he preaches this even virtually. But Rodney, how are you doing today, brother? I'm good, bro. What an introduction. <laughs> you always give me <laughs> introductions where I just... I didn't even know what to say afterwards, but yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be back on. Yeah, and 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 I, if anything, I downplay because I know that you are a humble guy. And today we have some great news. We're talking about people that um, Rodney and I. Last time we had talked on camera, we were doing this investment with his company and his man cave products, and I can tell you. Everything went as planned. Everything is beautiful. The only thing I could even complain about, neither of us could control because PayPal fees and that world remit now thinks Ghana is on some type of, I don't know what type of list, but Rodney, yeah. where do we start? What has the progress been of your products? And then I'm going to go even deep. I have my board even to give more details of the deal we did. Sure. Um, We've had so much celebrity exposure. Um, so many um, celebrities have just said yes um, because we've gone in this wave of customizing scents uh, that have their image and their face and their name and everything on it. Uh, so they use that to probably promote their tour if they're an artist or to promote their new radio show if they're a host. And that's really taken off and it's really given, given us some credibility in the perfume oil space. And um, we're looking to now make our own um, alcoholic uh, perfumes um, that will be named after some of the regions in Ghana to pay tribute uh, to our homeland. So that's that's taken off quite well. Oh, wow. That's major. And that, I mean, I, I'm thinking of, OK, where else can we do that same thing and be there first and just have, you know, when the people catch on? That's a beautiful thing. Congratulations to that. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me explain to you guys in case I make a mistake, Rodney would um, correct me, but I gave Rodney, I invested $1,600 and in five months, 5.5 months, I was supposed to get, and I have my board here that I even wrote it on because I have different <laughs> boards for, for, for different things. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. All right, proceed, proceed. Okay. Then, then correct you. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I gave Rodney sixteen hundred, and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna make um this much in profit." And the again, the only reason the numbers are different is because PayPal in the issues. I call it financial um racism because they only do it to <laughs> certain countries, especially in Africa, where they don't allow you to send money. I was able to send money to Rodney with paying very minimal fees, but yep. now he has a problem sending money here, which it makes me think that they, I, I just, they don't care about us. Michael Jackson, MJ, all the MJs said it. So yeah, yeah. I made about 32% on my money people. And I'm going to, of course, reinvest. And I even have something that Rodney doesn't even know about, um, coming up where I'm going to be doing even more investment in Africa. I really have to show the people and I have to be strategic on my numbers so they don't say, oh, it's because you have, you know, two more pennies than me. No, I'm going to show you on a basic budget how not just to get out of debt, but also invest more. And I want to invest more and I want to do more things with Rodney. So Rodney, is anything that I said, is it incorrect? No, I think you, you are spot on and you know, back when we started about five months ago, there was so much, uh, so many questions. Uh, how can you make money from just selling perfume or, or, or how can you uh, assure my returns would come to me? But um, we've been able to, you know, get through that, sift through that. We've made record sales. Last year we made over 300 and I think 360,000 Ghana cities. Um, I don't know how much that would be in dollars, but about you know, 56,000. 
Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for, for African business, first year in business, um, it's phenomenal. And a lot of people have used this as a passive way of taking care of their bills. Um, some people are just leaving their capital in. They just want to keep on rolling over for like a year, two years, taking that interest, feeding their family, paying school fees and, and all of that. So I'm glad that we've been able to you know, diversify, as you would say, uh, into the big boy level. Yeah, yes, and I, I want to also, the reason my board may be wrong, I said in 5.5 months. I gave the money in November. I got my money back in February. So, you know, and you had mentioned in the interview that the um, it might mature beforehand in three months. You, you said that on the record, and it did. So I want to make sure that's where my board is wrong, too. It's even better, and that's another reason why we have to reinvest, take that profit and everything, and throw it back in there, and I'm hoping to even do more. Now, I don't want to get greedy, and I can mm -hmm. already hear somebody right now saying, well, if you're doing that, hey, Rodney, how much money will you take? Because some folks will try to give you so much money because they're greedy, and this is the number one problem people have in Africa, but what's the <laughs> limit that you will take uh, at this moment? So far, there hasn't been a limit. Um, I, I try and advise people the best way I can to just be responsible with your money. Um, the most uh, I've been proposed um, is about 50,000 uh, Ghana cities. Uh, and someone said that they wanted to invest 100,000, which is close to about 20,000 US dollars. And they want to leave that over a three year period with, you know, just getting interest along the way. So we have to kind of tailor make a deal where those who are investing higher amounts will get portions of their interest paid out over time until their, you know, investment amount does mature. Um, but they want to re reinvest a, a few times. Um, but don't give me anything ridiculous like $100,000 unless you're willing to wait like five years for that because we are selling perfume. And that's why I'm getting people to realize that it's selling perfume oil. It's not a Forex scheme. It's not selling gold bars. It's not selling stocks or shares. These are products that need to be sold, which means that there needs to be demand in order for supply to reach its cap. So I tell people to be responsible with their investing. Yeah, because, I mean, someone might say, hey, let me give you, you know, um, 100000 Let me give you 300000 so I can try to get a, a crazy monthly return. And it is perfume. So, you know, it, it, you never know what could happen. I mean, another COVID madness, maybe people don't care what they smell like. You've done exactly. very well. Yeah, you've done very well, though, through this wave. Why do you think people still cared about perfume, even though they might have been locked down? Um, well, first, first of all, um, the lockdown restrictions weren't as strict in Ghana like the other countries. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise as well. But I think the affordability of what we sell um, is really attracting to people because we're not trying to target high income earners. We're targeting those who are of the lower tier uh, for as low as maybe $2.50 you can get a small pint-sized perfume to wear. And what we've been able to do is focus a lot of our attention on those who want to be sellers. And we found that our, our increase in popularity took place when we onboarded more sellers. So the average person will spend maybe $500 to invest to be a seller. That's about 2,500 Ghana cities. And if we get 10 of those a month or 20 of those a month, and we give them active coaching, okay, this is how you sell, this is how you sell, this is how you sell, they keep on coming back. And what we've also done is we've given referral commissions to those who refer other sellers. So maybe you are selling 2,000 cities worth. You know a friend that owns a store, they might want to buy 10,000 cities worth. So in return, you might get maybe 1,000 cities as a thank you from us. And that's going to encourage people to now refer other sellers onto us. So we've tried to really be smart with our approach. We, we have wholesalers. We have those for celebrities. We have custom-made orders. We have normal retail orders. And it's just we're trying to attract different types of people at the same time. How, you know, I, I'm thinking about that that referral fee because I, I know I was like, hey, what is that referral fee? So um, you, you definitely mentioned that, which all my clients know if we do, you know, we get kickbacks all the times so I give it to them or, you know, and sometimes they give it right back to me, <laughs> but yeah. I, I like to do that because I'm just doing my job. Um, sure. But 
But with, you know, the growth of this in Ghana and other countries, do you see yourself having a Jumia play or an Amazon play? And I'm going to be honest, if you when you need that partner in the States, I definitely want to be in that distribution line. Sure. Sure. Um, well, the, the, well, the next thing we're trying to do is uh, build this website. And it's going to be a very robust website. I think I mentioned it last time that I spent over $4,000 on it and that's going to have so many different components where a lot of things are going to be automated um we believe that the referral system is going to make us get more traction um uh, but we need to also regulate it in such a way where we don't go out of pocket because we need to still spend money on bottles and on the perfume and on the labeling and on the labor and on the lights and all that stuff so um something like uh, one of our packages we only start referring from about a hundred dollars and up and that, that fee, I think you get like $5 or $6 or something like that. And in America, that might not be that much because well, $5 can't even buy a bottle of water anymore. Uh, but $5 here actually does a lot. So the average Ghanaian is thinking, okay, if I, if I get 10 people, um, you know, I, I've, I've made pretty much my monthly salary. If I get 20 people, then I could probably quit my job and do this full time. So I, I, I always came from the scope where, uh, allowing people to uh, uh, be be getting cash back. I even do it in my Forex thing as well. Cash back, cash back, cash back. That just allows you to not spend money on advertising, really. They're going to patronize you to the moon. So um, in, in my next phase of business, that's where I'm going to be focused on. For the investments, there's cash back. For wholesale deals, there's cash back. Just nothing retail because, you know, that's just how it is for now until we, we, we hit maybe 3 million net worth in our businesses, then maybe... We can do that. But other than that, I'm just trying to stabilize everything and make sure we don't go out of pocket. OK, that that's beautiful. And, and I say Jumia because I'm a, you know, investor in Jumia, just, you know, like anybody else getting stock. But I remember when I got it for under five dollars and now it's <laughs> over, you know, 40. It's hit as high as over 60 dollars. And I had so many people telling me, oh, they're dying and they're dead. And I have so many people now thanking me. But most of them are uh, a brony, uh, Mzungu. You know, they were not black folks who said, yeah. I will <laughs> I'll trust the process. And I don't care. I'm like, hey, whoever gets it whoever's in that tribe uh and, but i definitely can see how people would want that cologne from the continent and you know we could even call it vibranium right oh man i'm giving away ideas <laughs> yeah. but but people can really like to to get that um and i, I want to know you know how do you do this and not and take time away from your Forex because you're successful in the Forex. And many people say, well, if you're making so much money in Forex, why just not stick with that? Because you can't pass Forex down to your children, unfortunately. Uh, you may have 10 children and maybe two or three will develop the skill. Um, Forex is a lifelong uh, journey and it, it, it's, it's very quick to learn it, but it takes a long time to master it. So I, I wanted to be able to do something knowing that when I have children, I can give something to them. And, and that is having something offline. And, and, and those who are Forex traders know that the Forex market doesn't move all the time anyway. You could be stuck in a trade for two, three, four weeks and you haven't made anything. So what, what are you doing in that time to be able to make that bread? And I've always been a business enthusiast anyway. I think you've known me since the time I was doing printed t-shirts and I was selling them for $25. I've always loved the idea of doing business. And so... Uh, to me, it doesn't even feel like a busy business because I enjoy it so much. Uh, but what I've been able to do in Forex was have people to be able to fit in certain areas that people wouldn't miss me so much. So I have two or three guys that are doing education services. And, you know, my system is a lot more automated. And this deal I have with a broker coming up very soon is now going to eliminate the notion of people having to pay for courses. They fund their account. They join my academy. My academy has... Um, different telegram groups for different products. And so you don't really need to feel my presence anyway. That's just up and running. And so I've always felt like, okay, how can I get my business or this thing up to the point where it's automated? So I now have time to be able to work on something else I want to do. So that's, that's just been my sort of thought process. 
and and some folks, you know, you see them online. I too, I have been snubbed um, by forex people who, you know, they claim they're making so much money and that they can handle your money until you find out. They didn't have it figured out. There's so many rules in America as well to, you know, everyone's, um, you know, just to be fair and open. But when you take money, you have to be responsible. And just so you guys know, it was probably a year or two prior. I would I was begging Rodney, even back when he was in Australia, I said, take my money, just invest yep. it for me. And he did not. Nope. Killing. You, you got to learn it. Seems like if you know what you're doing, can't do it. And I was like, gosh, and he still can't take my money because of the laws um, <laughs> that are going on. It's but not just that. I just I, I, I've come to a point in life to realize that no matter what, I mean, OK, let's use this as an example. You probably, if I said I'm gonna trade your account for you, you'll probably give me ten thousand dollars off the bat and say, "Look, I'll see you in a year." But there's something inside the human soul that will never let you rest because you couldn't do it yourself. As much as you want to be able to invest and to be able to make money from other people, if you cannot get to the point where you can't do it yourself or you can do it yourself, sorry, you will always feel unrest. You're always going to be dependent on other people fishing for you rather than learning the skills to fish. And that's the, the mentality I'm kind of changing in Africa. Whereas before it used to be do it for me, do it for me. And I've been saying no for so many years. They're like, okay, fine. We just want to learn what you know. And then from there, we can try and do the same thing. And so that's where my mind is at. I don't want to take anyone's money. I don't even have time. I, I, I've already got enough emotional stress on my side. I don't need someone else's stress on me all the time. How are my trades doing? Well, is it, are we winning? I've been there, done that. It's, it's not fun. So, well, I'm glad you know. You know, you know your purpose and you know your way. And like I say, I, I would not have bothered you. Like I didn't bother you on this one. Like, hey, how much cologne have we sold? Um, you know, where that, are we at? <laughs> exactly. I've been here for you for months because people now know. Okay, if it's cologne. My, my expectations have been minimized because I know that they are selling. But for some reason in the Forex market or the stock market, people just magically think that I'm going to turn 10,000 to 100,000 in a few weeks. And so they have this anxiety about it. So that's where the fun is just stripped out. And yeah, it's, it's just not cool. It's not cool at all. Well, you know, and I do my own stock, not because I have any inside knowledge, but I know I invest in what I see the future and what I, I you know, just things that I'm reading. But the reason so for the Forex um, and even why I gave the other gentleman um, money and then I, and I've had him on the show, even if things you know haven't worked out, is I wanted to fund this podcast. And I wanted to do even more things with it. And I'm like, well, maybe that's a way. But I know with everything else that's going on with kids and wife and just life, I said, mm -hmm. what is an easy way to like have more funding so I can pay for more people to do mar more marketing so I can just be the talent bringing in the great people. So that was my why. And I know something will come, but you're kind of telling me what my wife tells me with my courses that I'm creating on Africa. She's like, Instead of just hiring people to, you know, do it for you, learn the skill because yep. you ha you can do it. And so I got to, you know, go through the process. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and people tend to appreciate it much more when they know they have to. Um, they realize that it's not a walk in the park and, and the respect for what you do is greatly increased uh, when people also walk in your shoes. So it's, it's a great piece of advice that YP has given you. Yeah, yeah, you got to marry somebody who can give you the game and uplift you, a helpmate uh, for sure. You know, the, yep. Rodney, I know you're almost uh, getting to that point. No pressure on that date. But online, there is a lot of, you know, nonsense going on. And some of it is funny. I won't lie. I watch some of it talking about, you know, high value man and what a woman is and what a woman isn't in today's time. Um, right. Could we see a show YouTube or something from you because the, everything you present is, is, is fine. It's finessed. It's, it's, you know, it's just, it's quality. <laughs> so, you know, could, will we ever get your personal life and you know, you showing us how you have evolved as you get married? I think, I think, I think, um, I think now more than ever people would want to sit down and, and hear about it. 
uh, because the different types of people that have come in my life have only been in my life for a fraction of my life. They haven't gotten the whole totality of it. So I think um, the year that we met, we, we met after the, the, the biggest breakup of my life uh, when I was in my suicidal phase. Oh, no, actually, no, you met me before that when I was doing the T-shirt stuff and all that. And then I got engaged and then everything just like went kaput, right? So, mm. you know, you only know that one area of it. Other people who are seeing me in Africa now think I'm just some successful dude that is running multiple businesses and all of that other stuff. Other people from Australia are seeing me as that hopeless guy that was always preaching the gospel that has no future and has gone from relationship to relationship. To relationship. So I would like to, you know, kind of put everything together and show people, okay, this is the road. And I, I think having the man cave is going to help put that all together. Um, letting people know that, okay, this is what I've learned about being a man and learned about responsibilities and learned about relationships and getting married and learned more about my faith and what it takes to run a business and all of that sort of stuff. And I, I'd love to do that. I don't know if I want to do it in a series or do it as a one-off. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and by the way, when I went through my, my, my issues with my exes and my ex fiance my confidence just went kaput. So I'm, I'm only getting used to speaking properly now because for a period of seven months, I wasn't talking. Mm. I was so depressed and wasn't talking. So even putting sentences together was hard. And now learning a new language and learning all that other stuff, it's, it's now, you know, it will take that time. But I, I do believe that I'll get there. I'm also going to be working back on music as well, where people don't even know I was a musician once upon a time. So I'm, I'm trying to figure everything out. Oh, man, they don't know with the with the hair, you know, all the way down and on the rooftops. <laughs> and that was one of the things I said that if I was going to be reborn and do the music thing again, the reason why I even cut my hair was because the, the my ex fiance's request was that she wanted me to be at least clean shaven, like have a low fade and, you know, cut my beard and everything like that. And I just realized I did all that nonsense for nothing. So in order for me to be rebirth, I need to go back to the man I once was before I can continue doing my mission. Wow. I'm thinking, yeah, you got to tell that story because um, I'm going to eventually, God willing, put like a book together. I can't say names of like certain people because I may not be safe in Africa or when they come to America. Some of them are in some high positions. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'd, I'd hate to. Yeah. If I say some things, you know, and talking about people who knew us and they, you know, with social media, folks can connect the dots and say, I knew you from uni and it was that person. But um, no, I, I'd, I'd love to love to see that. Now, as far as, you know, your Forex, it's you've put the courses together. Do you have any um, plans on maybe putting a course how to do business in Ghana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually working on that. So um, that's going to be tied with the man cave. And that is just going to be the notion of how to make a hundred thousand cities um, in, in your business. Now uh, the average business will I've come to learn makes, I don't even know if they make profit in their first few years, um, but their, their concept of business is also quite flawed as well. So, um, you know, being, being a year in sales, being a year in the business, people are so desperate to know what did I do to not only get uh, an expensive part of Spintex. Uh, I don't even know, how to equate that in, in America, but it'll be like having an expensive shop in Sydney, you know, um, and running not just one shop, but, you know, five shop spaces in a span of two years in a foreign country. So I'm, I'm looking to work on a course. I don't know when I'm looking to release that, um, but it'll probably be beginning of 2022 so that I can just get this Forex stuff uh, on, on, a, on a nice foundation. Now, when you create a course, do you sit there and just, you know, throw everything together and then later on you clean it up or maybe you have a team member come clean it up? Like, what's your process? Uh, my process is understanding that my mind is so traumatic and so jumbled up that people will not be able to understand everything I have to say in a 40 minute clip. 
So I want to be able to paint a picture of this is what I want to accomplish. And in order to accomplish this, I need to break up my mind into segments. And those segments can be now modules. And those modules completed can be a fraction of what I'm thinking. So what I did with my Forex course is, okay, how do you understand the markets through this notion of geometry? I can't just give you the geometric patterns. I have to let you know why you need to trade this way, why you need to think this way, why you need to do it this way. So I have to build up from beginners, mastery, university, and then have other little courses that will help you build your way up. And before you know it, you're at the end of the course and you realize you've had one hell of a journey. So that's what I do with course appropriation. I have what I want to be able to do. And normally I don't rehearse what I'm going to say. Even when I'm preaching, I have, okay, this is my final message and this is where I am. And as I'm going with the flow, if it starts sounding good in my head, I can then just you know, paint the picture for the audience um, because I don't, I don't really read that much. And the, the traumas in my life are like so much. I've seen so much in my lifetime where I, I, I think I'm very, very weird, to be honest, because how do you, okay, you, you're young, you see your father beat your mother and then your father just disappears for over 20 years. You've had no real male influence. You go into the church, you've had, you know, men figures that were like father figures also turn their back on you. You have a relationship where people turn their back on you. You're always poked fun of because of your weight or in Australia, your color of your skin or the way you even speak because I have a fat tongue, which means that I can't pronounce certain words properly, which led, led to a speech impediment. So all of these things, I now have to like creatively come up with a way to construct it in my mind so it makes sense. And then I just paint the picture and trying to get a feel of how the person would receive it in order to then just deliver my message. So yeah, I have a complicated process, but yeah, it works, I guess. Yeah, and you are not that strange, um, at least to me. I, you know, we're definitely in the in the same tribe. And what I mean by that, people, is if you read the book Tribes by Seth Godwin, like even saying Godin or Godwin or whatnot, um, I just I just throw it out there. That's my accent. Like a New Yorker, like someone from the South, that's just how I'm going to pronounce it. And when I try to do like certain even, you know, West African names, hey, I know that's not what it is, but that's the way I'm going to say it for right now. Bear right. with me because, yeah. because how our minds can work, like we know what we know and we would only assume that folks have read what we've read. So when we say something, maybe it's not as clear, but if you would have read this book, you would have known. And to me, like anything by Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I just assume a 30 year old has read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, maybe you read it in high school, you know, like I, I did because you were forced to read or and I was a terrible student, but I was forced to read when I went home. My mother, right. here, here's books, here's books. But my, well, my wife told me this in front of a setting one time. And for a second, I was like, oh, that's my problem. A friend of ours was like, what the heck are you talking about? And, you know, yeah. beautiful woman. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And my wife says it's because of this, this and this. And she told me, she's like, everybody does not know or are exposed to what you're exposed to. Certain things you're going to have to break down to people because they just don't know, even though you think it's, you know, common knowledge. And so that's all that we're dealing with. Just do people know what we know? And if they don't, let's just make it very simple form. And I don't mind, I don't mind that at all. And we just have to learn then how to better communicate some of those things. Cause in Forex, your, your, your vocab, you know, everything about it. But if someone hasn't studied any part of Forex, they're going to say, what do you mean a pimp? No, I said a pip. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you're talking about pimping and, 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 and I don't know what pimping is. Pimping is when you guys are at work and your boss tells you you can't take a break or you got to work overtime. That's pimping. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You know, but no, this this is beautiful. Now, as always, I got to know because your company has just grown um, with the good that you have received. What have your community givebacks been or what are you planning to do? Okay, so, I mean, last time, I, I, I think I mentioned now our talk that we haven't been so open about our givebacks. Um, and so since that talk, I've, I've challenged myself to be 
a lot more open so that when someone asks me, I know exactly what I did. So, um, for example, my workers, they all got iPhones straight away uh, for the good work that they've done. I just said, hey, you know what? You need to level up in life and you can't level up anywhere else but from where you start working. So I think they all had like, you know, old knockback Samsungs and they came to work one day that iPhone 7s, you know. Um, I bought Wi-Fi a car. Um, that's not community, but I think that's an accomplishment in Africa to buy your, your woman a car. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to pay up some people's bills and get people started in school. And uh, just a normal, you know, here's 20 bucks for credit or, you know, for transport home and all that, all of that good stuff. That's what we've, we've started to do. And all of these small things, I didn't even know people were watching, but it got me nominated for some awards um, as an uh, uh, inspiring CEO or entrepreneur of the year or something like that, um, that my works in the community haven't gone unnoticed and they want to celebrate me and, and yada, yada, yada. So it's been, it's been awesome. Um, other community things I've done back in Australia, um, you know, contribute to certain causes and all, all of that good stuff. So that's that's what we've been doing. Um, but now with my broker partnership, we, we're looking to give away laptops every single month to aspiring Forex traders and phones so they can trade on the proper type of phone. And by the end of the year, if our, um, our momentum does grow well, we're going to start giving away cars as well and, and, and renting for people so they can have good places to live and all of that stuff. So it's a work in progress. When you talk about cars, um, one car I would love is anything from Kantanka. I wish they would ship. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And now I hear you guys have like uh, the $9,000 electric car, but I wish they would ship. I don't even know if it would be legal yet in the U.S. because you know how, you know, you got to make that payment and, and whatnot. But where do you... Do you think those cars, like, what's the future of those cars? And can you get, like, stock in them locally? Because I have not seen that here that we can, you know, uh, get stock. I could, I could ask him. Um, we've had a few chats um, about it. What, what I find very, very sad is a lack of patronage in Ghana. Uh, when, when I hear people from America talking about how great the car is, um, and then the Ghana government goes and signs a deal with Volkswagen, to, to now, you know, do things for them. I'm just thinking, what is wrong? Because we have locally made, able people that can be able to do certain things, but no support. So um, if people want to invest in that, I can definitely link up with him, uh, the CEO. Uh, we've, we've had many, many chats and see if that's even on the table. Why not? Well, tell them there's a market that would love to order, you know, they, they can pay in cash. None of that, hey, pay half, pay now that they're doing there. But also yeah. even um, black media has not been able to to reach him. The um, the folks in between, it, it's just it's been uh, no no response. But, you know, me, I'd love to, you know, not just run this through my clients, but even other black media that would, you know, they, they talk about these cars but no one has been successful and we'd love for the sun to talk because the sun has a new idea it seems every month and he has a new car and he has you know robots that are you know look like straight out of movies so I, we we would very love good, it humble too very very humble so um i don't remember the last time we chatted because we we proposed having lunch some few months ago but then you know he got busy as he is, and I got a little bit busy as well. So I'll try and reach out to him again and see what can be done. So with all the success that you're having, you know, with business, and you were talking about the government, do you have any plans in the future to maybe run for office so you can say, let me try to clean some of this up, if that's even possible? Because we know government worldwide is a mess. Uh, all, all, all things are possible. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be very, very careful with the words I choose. R running for any form of political position um, comes with certain consequences that if you don't um, follow a certain mold, um, things might not go well for you. So at first I was like, yeah, I would, rather, I would like to be an MP and you know, clean up my streets and you know, be able to pave roads and you know, those things sound very, very noble when you're coming from the outside, but in the inside, 
you know, so, some people, not all of them, there are a lot of good ones out there, but some people don't like Mr. Hero, Mrs. Hero, don't like clean up your roads, you know, some, some, and they're very tactical at when they want to fix certain roads and do all that other stuff. So I'd rather be a noble citizen that would help rather than trying to take a position in office and make other people feel like I'm changing a system that people say can't be changed. So yeah, I, I, I don't know yet. We'll see, we'll see in 30 years. What, if, what if, do you, what do you think it is? Cause I've, I've, you know, every time in West Africa and my, my wife, especially and, and others, Oh, we need to clean up these streets. And how could people throw their trash here? And then you talk with the people there, they're not complaining. There, it's it's no problem. So, is it just the Western mentality where we're so used to certain order? Um, because we can't save Africa. We can bring our money like you are and create business, but you can't save like you're gonna be a superhero. Because some people they love that, you know, how their neighborhood looks. They don't see it as dirty. It's just their neighborhood. So, what yeah, can I mean- be done? Uh, I mean, you can see it from a few things. You can see it from the cultural element of this is their normal. And when you come in to invade their space, to change it, you, 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 are, you are triggering something in their amygdala, which is the fight or flight response, which is, hey, you are changing something that is my normal. And I don't appreciate that. So I have to end you. That's one thing. Second thing is no business makes a profit on something that is brand new. They make something out of something that is broken, which means that, you know, your car doesn't need servicing if it's not due for servicing. Your mechanic doesn't make money if if your pump is is brand new. So sometimes having a system that is broken attracts more money from outside and they can say that they will attempt to fix it, but having that broken look may attract people to just donate or invest. Um, And thirdly, Our, our, cult, our, our culture has been such where priority hasn't been placed on certain things. So uh, I'm trying to be careful here because I'm from two worlds. So sometimes the smallest things can be looked at as very, very disrespectful. But let me put it like this. Sometimes our people care more about the car they drive than the road they drive their car on. They, they care about the things that they shouldn't care about. Meanwhile, the thing that is the emergency that needs urgent care, they don't care, really, because that's just how, you don't even know. They just say, that's how it is. And you just embrace what it is and you just go on with your life. You just mind your business and you just keep it moving. Whereas, you know, in Australia and America, we're made to feel like this is a community effort. You do your part, I do my part. We keep Australia clean, keep America clean. Uh, because we care about our, our, um, our wildlife. We care about what the toxins are doing to our bodies. Meanwhile, you know, someone can just piss on the street or, um, excuse my language actually, or, or, or just throw rubbish. And it's, just, it's just normal. It's just what it is because fines aren't uh, Im- um, imposed or you know, punishment isn't imposed. So it's just like, oh, it is what it is. So you know- I don't want to ever be fixed. You know, in, in, in the, the urinating on the street bothers me. Part of it bothers me is I have a stomach that every time something exciting is going to happen, I'm going to have to use the restroom. Right. And so right. I've taken like a modium on long trips because I'm like, I don't want to have to use the bathroom. You guys, I'm getting real personal here. You're learning things. You won't learn this. And I'll probably never repeat it again, unless I'm charging you um, are getting interviewed by, you know, Oprah or something. Um, but I, I, it, it frustrates me, not necessarily because my kids have to see that, but it frustrates me that it's not even a poverty thing. I've had rich Africans do that yeah. in my, in my own neighborhood. Dude. in America and in Africa. And I'm like, the bathroom's right here. Just come ask the, you know, you're, you're, you're my, my baba. Come on. I, and yeah, they yeah. just, it's just normal. It's yeah, it is normal. And it's like, when I, when I, when I first came, I was just like, how could you do that? In Australia, you are fine. $200 on the spot, on the spot for indecent exposure. 
over here, I've got to go. I, you know, they'll, they'll get out of their Land Cruisers and their Range Rovers and they're walking by their urinating. It, it's just become our normal. And, and that's what I was saying before, that the priorities are placed on things that don't seem important, whereas the important things are just whatever. Uh, and so you have to look at the deeper meaning. If people are willing to urinate on waste, what would incentivize someone to pick up that same waste knowing it's being urinated on? So let's just add to the problem by continuing to urinate on it because I don't want to clean it up and I know what's happened there. So let's just continue doing it and then hope that God will cause the rains to come and wash everything away. That's why so many floods happening across. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, just- I, I have business ideas that I, you know, we just jot them on paper. We pray. We say when we're there because uh, the rich neighborhoods, um, at least in Yawunde, don't look like that. And the closer to the president's house, they don't look like that. So it's a mentality more than anything. But I think the worst thing for me, too, is after someone urinates, they then want to shake your hand. No hand <laughs> sanitizer, no wipes. And I'm just like. No, yeah, no, but, no. <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that because the architecture in Africa is quite strange, particularly in Ghana. I've just moved to a new apartment. I've moved to the airport, right? But, okay, we call it the airport residential area. So it's not like inside the airport. But the zoning is just so strange because you have what you would call the ghetto, right? Where, you know, people are urinating and everything like that. And then you, you would go two minutes down and all these fine houses are there. And it's literally like one side of the street, people are, li- uh, are living in like sheds or living under brick houses with no ventilation. And then two minutes down, fine houses, fine apartments, palm trees, tele- um, telegraph poles, all of that stuff, all on the same street. So yeah, it's just weird that we have so many oxymorons that are just in the same vicinity. Um, yeah, but Africa is a thrill. I say, God bless Africa. Yes. And it is the now and the future. And, you know, all the stats say, okay, in this year, in this time, when you and I are ready to retire and ready to even retire and go to whatever the next phase of, you know, heaven in a better place, there'll be more people there. So I'm really setting up for my children and my children's children, but we have to get in now and it's, it's, it's the now that it, it keeps me up and say it. I have to do it now because if not, we will have, um, you know, the Chinese and other Europeans ready to sell it back to our children's children for 10 times the price. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I, huh? I mean us, you know, this, this, this place, when you look at it is a blessing in so many ways. Um, when you compare it to, American Australia, if you make it work here, you will live a way better quality of life. I think I told you before, I've lived my best life in Africa. And people will say, well, how come? Well, you know, I was driving a nice car in Australia, nice Kia Cerato, nice sports car. I had a nice apartment, um, but it's all like credit. You have to get it and then you start paying it off with your various loans. And so you're always feeling like you're under pressure. Well, here, When you're paying your rent, you pay rent 12 months in advance. So at least for 12 months, you're not worried about rent. When you're buying a car, you're paying for the car in cash. When you're renting an apartment, it's it's 12 months, even like up to five years. You pay that, you've got nothing else to worry about. So, you know, if you are out there and you're thinking, okay, I I, I can't stand the the, the culture and the people and maybe some places smell. Yeah, those are all trivial things. But if you're able to find something to do here, I mean, you're going to enjoy retirement, really. And you're going to realize that you are stressing for nothing back in America and in Australia. So I encourage everyone that's out there to come on in. At least there are more and more of us here that can be your big brothers and sisters to help you assimilate into the system better. And I'll tell you, Australia sounds very nice because in America, if you are caught using the bathroom you possibly could be arrested you possibly could get a sexual uh charge because yeah. if, if you're exposed and now you're a sexual predator because you were urinating or even you know doing even more because your stomach for whatever reason which is yep. sad but that's what 
Australia too. Australia does the same thing. Yeah. Australia are fine for, for honking in your car for no reason. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> oh. and, and, and you talk about, and I learned this again from my wife, we would pay our mortgage in Texas and, and during the hardest time of my life due to my own dealings, um, yep. we would pay it a year in advance. We like to pay our bills in a year in advance. Do you yeah. know that the mortgage company one point about right before we sold the house, they said, you guys keep paying your mortgage a year in advance. You're evading taxes. I told my wife, she can't talk yeah, to them they, anymore. They, yes. They scare you with that. Like we, we can't prepare our life anymore. We have to <laughs> pay it when you want to. Like, that's just ridiculous. I'm told to pay. So I'm paying. Yes. So that that's the difference that Africa will, you know, you can do that. But let's let and and I think this is where I'm going to let people think and and end it and we'll take our conversation offline. The you you talk about, you know, the smells. I know Africans who hate the smell of African wear because of, you know, the stuff they spray. I have a collection of it. Your collection is, you know, so superior to anything that that i think i have but even the smell of body odor on the continent because just like rastafarians some people don't wear deodorant some people wear more natural deodorant and some americans like french people may not even take a shower but spray this perfume and say oh these people stink because they're smelling something different. Did you have to adjust to that at all? Or do you even not have those issues in Ghana? I'm still adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still adjusting. I, I think it's a God scent that I run a perfume business because I, I like a good smell. Um, and, you know, those are uh, another thing, like priorities are in the wrong place. People would prefer putting on uh, deodorant or perfume above taking a shower. Why? Because of a few factors, really. The top most reason is that they can't be bothered. The second reason is that they probably don't have access to running water. And it's not one of those Kenyan ads where you show one of those malnourished children. Some communities have like a local well or a local pipe that, you know, they get their water from. And if that well is dry or that pipe is dry, you can't take your shower. So sometimes it's no fault of them. It's just circumstance. Three, they think that perfume is a luxury of the rich. So if they put it on and they don't take a shower, they think that they're doing themselves and the people around them a great service by putting on this perfume. So having to educate them and saying that sometimes, oh, and another thing, sorry, cold showers. I know doctors have come out and said all this stuff about having a cold shower uh, shower, uh, regulates your blood circulation and all that, yada, yada, yada. I like my showers hot because we know that bacteria is killed in hot, in hot, uh, um, hot temperatures. So sometimes when they're showering, they're they're showering cold. And, And so when they're cleaning, I mean, use the same logic when you're washing the dishes. I do you wash the dishes cold or do you put it in the dishwasher where it's hot? You know what I mean? So we have that impression about dishes and how much more the temple that God has given us. So I think these are all the things that we have to kind of try and educate our brothers and sisters that are here because truth be told, not many people are teaching these sort of things because it's kind of like a no-go sort of area. Mm. So I think we have to talk about it. I appreciate you being open because many people don't want to talk about it, but no matter where you're from, it just depends. And for, for people to say, hey, this person reeks, um, it say, well, maybe you do. Because even in France, you know, people mm. are known to put the perfume on and maybe they'll take a weekly shower old days. Now yeah, more yeah. and more, you know, so we have to talk about it so we know because maybe this perfume that I have on, maybe it does stink to you and maybe you smell different to me. I like to say different, but, mm. um, you know, th- this is something that, books need to be written on because what I don't want Rodney is a bunch of us who don't have a real love for our people, but feel like we need to leave the West. And when we make the massive move to the continent and really start telling people you stink or you're stupid, which is a big insult in Africa, no matter where you go. Yeah. 
messy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we, we have to. Um, and unfortunately, it will be folks who might have been born there because I've heard pastors even say people put deodorant on when you're here in America. You don't want and some people have felt really bad. Like, hold on. You're I don't even stink. No one's complained at all. And some people don't stink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, I got a lot of, like, massive feedback because I think last week or two weeks ago, I went on air live and I said, look, um, there's this massive thing that goes around in Africa, and that is um, this thing called for girls or for guys. What, is, what it is is that you go to, like, a, a fetish priest, uh, a ritualist, and they prepare a perfume that is designed to attract the opposite sex to either sleep with them for ritual purposes or to just attract them. And so I came out and I pretty much said, you don't need these guys. You need to take a shower. And that was just like, oh, what? And I'm like, no, 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 no. <clears throat> How do you attract the opposite sex? Women like men that take care of themselves, that are well-groomed, that smell nice. It's not just about the money. And, 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 I keep on saying that like a lot of these intimacy issues that happen between couples, most of the times when someone leaves without saying anything, it has to do with odor, whether their breath stinks, whether their armpits stink, whether they're down, down there stinks. And people can't open up and say, look, we were intimate and it was nice and everything, but man, it smelled fishy up in this atmosphere. You can't say it. So you just have to just close your mouth and leave. So we just came out and said, you know what? Man cave is designed for guys not to embarrass themselves anymore. Hey, if you want anyone to tell you that you, you don't smell nice, let it come from the source that's trying to build you up from the ground up rather than you getting embarrassed by someone in the public to say that, hey, you smell. And there are ways we obviously go about it. Like, uh, what do you do when you get ready? They'll say, oh, I just get up and I, oh no, this is what we do in the man cave. This is the, the, the men's standard way of getting ready in the morning. You know, you do your morning devotion. You then have a nice hot shower. Then you um, you put on like um, pomade or skin lotion. Then you put on some roll-ons in case you sweat. Then you can put on some antiperspirant. Then you can put on some perfume oil and then you're ready to go. There's a, someone like you, you do that? I said, yes, I do that every single day. It's the reason why your girlfriend likes me. So if you do that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. I cannot wait for this vaccine and this whole COVID thing to be over because there's some traveling I have to do. And, you know, we're going to do some more things. We'll talk about it off air. I thank you for coming on, Rodney. Sure, sure, sure. No problem. Thanks for having me.